conservation techniques have greatly changed the way we protect the environment. And that applies to an element found in our gardens and on our farms. Topsoil is crucial to producing the crops that feed the nation and the world. And while it might seem like just dirt, it's actually an important resource that science is working to improve. Growing a bountiful crop requires many things. Plenty of water, cooperative weather, just the right amount of rain and sun, but without healthy soil, the harvest suffers. Is this from the set of farmers that we um, just received in yesterday, is that correct? That's why scientists like Ann Wolfe love unlocking the secrets in the soil. She's part of a team at Penn State University's Ag Analytical Services Lab. These folks test more than 45,000 soil samples each year, looking for everything from contaminants to healthy minerals and other nutrients. Each cup represents an acre of land. I worked on a farm for a number of years after I graduated. I saw a lot that was going on to both help and to hurt soils in the area I was living then and um, became very, very interested in how do we maintain one of our greatest natural resources in the United States. American farmers have always understood the importance of caring for their land, but it was the Dust Bowl in the 1930s that really brought home the need for better soil management. Prairie grasses across the Midwest once covered millions of acres of the world's most fertile soil, but careless farming and a long drought helped create massive dust storms that carried away countless tons of topsoil, ruining land and lives. Here at the University of California at Davis, soil scientists like Johann Six are leading studies to learn a lot more about dirt, not just what's in it and how to make it more fertile, but its role in reducing climate change. There's obviously a lot of things that are being studied uh, uh, for soils, uh, you know, and, and some of it is really looking at the basic properties. How is carbon and nitrogen cycling through, these, through the soil and therefore releasing gases into the atmosphere versus trapping it out of the atmosphere? At the Penn State lab, scientists are testing these soils to find the most healthy balance of minerals and organic matter, and to make sure farmers don't over-apply nutrients like manure or other fertilizers. So Doug, these are the soils I was telling you about that we just got in that are a little more unusual than others. Penn State agronomy professor Douglas Beagle says that's better for the grower's bottom line and ultimately what we pay at the supermarket, and it's better for the environment. I hear people complain about we're investing so much money in agriculture and it's only 1% of the population, but my counter argument is 100% of the population eats and we really depend on those farmers uh, you know, to provide that food. So if we want to have both of those goals, cheap food and a uh, uh, clean environment, uh, we're going to have to have some compromises there. It's not just farmers submitting their soil to this lab. The number of samples from towns and cities is booming, where urban gardens are blooming. I think it's exciting. I think anybody who, who understands where food comes from and watches, um, you know, plants a seed and watches it grow and begins to learn more about agriculture takes them a little bit more back to their roots and gives them a whole understanding of the entire um, food chain. A food chain perhaps made stronger by these stewards of the soil doing the dirty work for the rest of us.